This video was created without using a single keyframe, not one. No keyframes, no curves, no faff. Everything you're seeing was created using my Magic Animate version 2 tool, which is available right now for free. And it's awesome. And talking of awesome, this video was sponsored by audio. We've got in and out animations like whips, spins and zooms, plus mid animations like pulses, rotates and wobbles. And it's completely scalable, so you can make your animations as long or as short as you like. Now you do need to make sure that you're on at least DaVinci Resolve 17.4 to use this, and yes, it does work on DaVinci Resolve 18. It will also work on both the free and studio versions. So how do you get hold of it? Well, it's really simple. There's a link down in the description below, which will take you to my Ko-fi page, and on there you'll find my Magic Animate version two. Just give that a click and you can download it from there. Now, it is free. All you need to do is put a zero in the box if you don't wish to pay or donate anything. Follow the instructions until you get this view content. Give that a click, Magic Animate V2, simply download. Once downloaded, it'll look something like this. Don't worry about the long title name, that's just an oddity of Kofi, and you'll get a DRFX file. Double click on that. DaVinci Resolve will open up and then it'll ask you if you want to install Magic Animate version two. Simply hit install, and job done. So we've downloaded it, we've installed it, we're ready to go. So let me open up DaVinci Resolve, I'll show you where to find it and how to use it. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve. Now we're just gonna open up our effects library, top left hand corner, and then within the toolbox, we go to effects. Now to the left of effects, you've got this little arrow, give that a click to open up your folders underneath, you should see Mr. Alex Tech. Do that once again to see your Magic Animate folder, give that a click and then you'll see the three files within there. Now the magic animate effect is simply just one effect really, but there's three variations in there which just make your life a little bit easier. I'll explain those as we go. So first thing, I'm gonna grab this PNG and just drop it on my timeline. We'll lengthen it out a little bit and off we go. Now the magic animate will work on any images, so PNG files, any video files, as well as titles. But if you're doing titles, you need to make sure you use a text plus rather than the standard text. But for this demo, we're just gonna stick with this image. So I'm gonna grab my Magic Animate V2 and we're just gonna drop it on there like so. Now when you're using this, you don't use the transform tools within the inspector. So I'm not gonna adjust them at all, even if I want to make my image smaller. Instead, we drop the Magic Animate on there, we go to the inspector and then effects. And then within here, these top controls are our transform controls. So we've got center, we can move this around, we can zoom in and out, we can adjust our aspect, our angle, we can flip, we can adjust the pitch, and we can adjust the yours. If we want to reset any of these, we just double click on the words to reset them, like so, or there's a big global reset up in the top right hand corner. So I'm just gonna leave that where it is for now. Now there's some additional options within here. We've also got a drop shadow, so we can just drag that up to add a drop shadow. We then change the drop shadow angle, the distance, and the softness. So I can make that a little bit harder, like so. We've also then got motion blur and shutter angle. Quick note, the motion blur, really heavy, just the way that it is, it's really resource intensive. It kind of chugs even on my system. So generally I don't use it all that often, but it is there if you want to. Now it also does only affect the transition aspect, not the mid animations again, just because it's so resource heavy, but I'll cover that in the transitions section. And then underneath that, we've got our in out speed. So this just controls the animation speed for our transitions. So by default, it's one second, but if we wanted it to be two, two and a half, three seconds or whatever, we'd just scroll this up and that will slow down our animations. Or if we want really fast transitions, we can just bring that down like so. Simple. Now you can always go back and adjust them after the fact, it just makes life easier to do them. Initially, you go in, you transform it, do you get it in the right place? Add a drop shadow if you want to, and then job done. And then you can start to mess around with the transitions. And we've got essentially five options for your transitions. You can do whips, zooms, spins, dissolves, and then aspects. So let me show you how that works. It's really quick and it's really easy. So I've got my PNG. All we need to do is open these up and then we just pick the ins and outs. So I'm gonna start off with zoom because it's really simple. We've got an in and an out and then our options. So I'm gonna move from play here to the beginning. If we just tick in and then hit play, you'll see we now have a real simple in animation like so. We don't yet have anything out. So we're gonna tick out, hit play, and now we've got an out animation like so. Underneath there, we've got these curve options. The zoom curve simply changes the animation curve, so the acceleration. Now I can't go through all of these, so just experiment with them, honestly. Just play around with them. This one on the left will adjust the start of the animation, so basically the first half, whereas this second drop down will adjust the second half of each of the animations. 
And as a rule of thumb, as you go further down this list, the faster the animation becomes. So sine, for example, if we play that, is quite slow. If we were to change both of these to Expo, you can see it's got a much, much sort of faster, much more acceleration. Now, if none of these curves are doing it for you and you're feeling really jazzy, change the curve from easing to custom and then you can create your own curves. So all we need to do, we can click on the end points and we can use the little handles just to smooth these out. We can also click on the line at any point to add an additional handle so we can move these around. If it's a bit abrupt, right click on the point, you've got all of these options, just go to smooth and it'll smooth that point out and you can just drag these around to do custom curves to get it looking however you want it. So let's go with something really crazy like that and now if we hit play, it's going to do something like that. So you can just use these custom curves to get it looking exactly as you want it. Now no motion graphics or text animations work without a good soundtrack and some decent sound effects. And that's where this video's sponsor, Audio, comes in. It's a music subscription service that has a highly curated catalogue of music and sound effects. And that means you're getting the very best stuff that's been handpicked by the guys and girls at Audio. Plus, one of the best things for me, it's all really easy to find because it has some of the best filters in the game. We've got filters that allow you to sort by instruments, theme, build up, as well as genre and mood. So it's really easy to find the music that you're looking for. The Audio Pro license gives you unlimited downloads of all of that music and sound effects. And it's available for a special price right now of just 59 bucks for the first year. That's a massive 70% off. And that Pro license doesn't just cover you for YouTube. It pretty much covers you for everything you could possibly need from video games to podcasts to TV and even films. So you know you're covered for pretty much any video project you're going to take on. To get started, simply head over to audio.com forward slash Alex. There is a link down in the description below and use the code Alex70 to get that 70% off and get started for just 59 bucks. Simple. Now we've got our in and out on this. We can move it around and we've always got our in and out and we can lengthen it, shorten it, whatever we need. And we've still got these in and outs regardless of what we do with this. It will just always work. And then what we can also do, make a little cut in it. And now we've got a new out and then another in like so. So these in and outs will always work regardless of how long it is, where it is, or whatever you're doing with it. Now, of course, you can combine them. So we've got our zoom controls. I'm going to untick the in. So we've just got this zoom out at the minute. And we're going to go to whip and we'll turn on the out for that. So now we've got a whip and a zoom out and it gives us that sort of effect. I'm going to tick in for the whip. So now we're whipping in and let's go to spin and we'll turn that in as well. And now I've got this really cool little roll in animation. Now the whip controls are a little bit more complicated, but they're still really self-explanatory, honestly. Put your player at the very beginning. The whip scale controls how far you're whipping in from. So by default, it's one. But if we just bring this in, we can have it sort of just wee, roll over like so. We've then got the whip in angle. So at the minute it's coming from over here on the left, we can just change the angle. So if we want it to come over from the top right like so, it's just going to whip in like that. We've then also got this whip in spin. So rather than just coming in, it can also go on a bit of a journey and whip around like so. So just have a play with all of those. The same goes for the whip out. So you can just control the whip out angles independently. So you can have it whip in from one side and out another and just mess around with all of these. You've got dissolve and you've got aspect. So let me just turn all of these off. If we just go to dissolve, this is a real simple dissolve like so. This combines really nicely with a whip. So I can just do a really slight whip like so, have it dissolve in, it just looks really nice. And then we've also got this aspect control. So let's turn this on for the out and it'll just squish it down like so. That's combined with a dissolve and off you go. So you just combine these to get the in and out animations that you want. Cool. Now we're going to have a look at the mid animation controls and they allow you to do some really funky stuff. We've got a pulse effect, a shake, a wave and a wobble. So let me show you how they work. So sticking with the same PNG as before, we've got our ins and outs already set. If we scroll down, we've got this mid animation control. If we expand that, we've got pulse, shake, wobble and wave. So let's start at the top, pulse. If we just increase this, this is the amount of pulse we're going to get, this sort of bouncing effect. And we're going to get this little bounce as we go. We've got a pulse count. So at the moment, it's going to do five pulses, however long this is, which does mean that if I lengthen this out all the way, the pulses are going to slow right down. So you may want to increase the pulses if you're doing a really long file, but obviously using 20 pulses, if it was really short, it's going to be really quick and crazy. 
So you just need to adjust that accordingly. The scale is basically how far in it's coming. So if you want a big bounce like so, or just a teeny tiny one. And then we've got very similar controls for the rest. So the shake angle just confirms how much of a shake it's gonna have. So we've got 42 degrees. And again, this one's gonna shake five times. We can increase that to give it more of a shake. We've then got wobble, which is just a real random sort of wobbliness. And then under here, we can change the smoothness. So if we want it to be really smooth or really janky, we can just mess around with those as we need to. And then lastly, we've got waviness. So let's increase the waviness. And then we can change to vertical or horizontal as we need to. And as before, we can combine these. So let's give this a bit of a pulse, a bit of a shake and a bit of a wobble. And now we've got this effect going on. Now we'll always finish before the end animation. So it will stop and then whip out. So it'll whip in and then start doing craziness. And again, we can lengthen this out. We can make a cut. It'll keep doing exactly what it needs to do. It'll then whip out. Next one will come in and then it'll start its animation for however long your file is. So you never need to have a mess around with keyframes, lengthening things out, moving things along if you just want to adjust the length of your image or your text. How easy is that? Combine them all, mess around, get some really cool effects. And now for the final aspect of this, there is the background creator. This I just put in for a little bit of fun. Allows you to do some really cool stuff if you're using a logo, for example. So let's have a real quick look at that. So we're sticking with this PNG. It's all animated like so, and we want to turn this into a little background. So what we're going to do, scroll right down till you get to the background creator. And then all you want to do, it seems a bit strange at first, but crop in left until you start cutting into your image. So that's too far, so I'm going to back it up a little bit. Crop in from the right, same again, until we start cutting in. Top and then bottom, perfect. Now it won't look like it's worked at the moment. So then underneath there, you've got edge behavior. Change that to either reflect or wrap around. So I'm gonna go with wrap around. And now we've got this duplicating across our preview. Then we've got zoom, so I'm just gonna zoom this out. And now we've got loads of my logos. Let's scroll up a bit. We're gonna add a little bit of pitch, a little bit of your just to make it look a little bit jazzier. Now if we go to the beginning, they're all gonna pop in. They're all gonna do a bit of a pulse like so. Now, if you notice any additional cropping or harsh edges like I've got here, because it's pulsing, it's growing too big for its box, it's cropping itself, but it's easy to fix. So in this background creator, this zoom here basically controls the zoom for the entire background. So as you zoom out, zoom in, we zoom in everything like so. If we scroll up to the very top in the transform sections up here, this zoom controls the actual image itself. So if we zoom this out, we can just make it smaller within its box. So when it's pulsing, it doesn't hit the edges and we don't get any harsh edges. Much, much better, real quick and easy to fix. So why are the three versions? Well, your Magic Animate V2 is your do it all. If you only want the in and out animations, then there's a specific transition one just for that. It doesn't have the mid animations included. And then if you only want the mid animations, there's that one too, which doesn't have the transitions. So it just makes life a little bit easier and can speed up the workflow and can speed up the processing. So there it is. There's my Magic Animate version two. Let me know what you think down below. Hopefully it's useful. If you've got any feedback, do let me know because I'm always looking to improve this for a version 2.1 or even a version 3 further down the line. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time.